David Daycake, adjunct professor of religious studies at George Mason University, finished up this session of panel presentations with his talk, A Traditionalist Contribution to Christian-Muslim Interreligious Dialogue, A Study of Two Perspectives on the Crucifixion. This talk delved into another controversy in Christian and Muslim theology, the crucifixion of Christ. Daycake first pointed out that the Quran itself gives an account that is open to interpretation regarding the crucifixion event on Golgotha. In this portion of his talk, he goes on to explain how one eminent traditionalist, Dr. Sayed Hussein Nasser, suggests that there may be two very providential and thus valid ways to view the one event. So we see here that at every turn, where it seems to be saying something definitive about what took place on Golgotha, there's always some other way to view things. Right? Now, if we look at the perspectives of Dr. Nas and Dr. Lings, uh, we see that the depth of possibilities of the Quranic te texts are taken very seriously. Um, Dr. Nas says in an article that appeared in a book called Christian Muslim Encounters, uh, he says, modern epistemologies, talking about the crucifixion here, modern epistemologies based upon empiricism and a one-to-one -one correspondence between the knowing subject and the known object are at a loss concerning the crucifixion. One could say that such a major cosmic event as the end of the earthly life of Christ could in fact be seen and known in more than one way, and that it is God's will that Christianity should be given to see that end in one way, lahum, it appeared so to them, and Islam in another way. Dr. Nas uh, hasn't written about this, but he described to me what he uh, kind of gave an illustration of what he means by this, and he said that uh, the issue of the crucifixion is like the study of light in modern quantum mechanics. That is, we normally think that a, a physical event or a physical reality can only really be one thing. Right? The man is either in the car or he's not in the car. Christ was either crucified or he wasn't crucified. But as we know from the study of modern physics, uh, light, for instance, can be both, at one and the same time, a wave and a corpuscle. It can act like a flowing, like flowing water, or it can act like a bullet, dis discontinuous. And so that is what he means by how one event, the event of the crucifixion, can be understood in two completely different manners, seemingly opposing manners, by two religious communities without bringing about, you might say, what we normally think of as a logical contradiction because that possibility does exist even within the physical world. So just to conclude, both of these views of Dr. Lings and Dr. Nass take account of the full range of possibilities uh, within the Quranic scripture and also within the orthodoxy of Christianity because this is a doctrine that is essential to Christianity. If there's no redemption, if Christ doesn't die, there's no redemption. So even though this is not an essential doctrine within Islam, it's essential to Christian orthodoxy. Both of these views uh, take account of these full range of possibilities uh, and remain at the same time within the orthodoxy of Islam and recognizing, you might say, that the transcendent unity of truth uh, exists within these diverse orthodoxies. That is, truth within many forms, as Prithraf Shuan has spoken about the transcendent unity of all religions. Thank you.